first. Well, well, good luck with that. <laughs> hey, first of all, how is Guardians 2 going to be different as much as you can say from Guardians 1 from a musical perspective? Yeah. Well, I think the, there are a few pluses in knowing that we have uh, the main Guardians of the Galaxy theme that we feel really positive about. So there are going to be new instantiations of that in this this uh, movie. Um, and because we've already established that language, I think carrying that forward into the new one, even though the new themes have been established, I think we have a an understanding or confidence in, in the musical language that we're working with and how the songs and the score work together and how to really address the emotions because there's you know myriad emotions in that film. Um, however, this is a new movie and the screenplay is incredible. I mean, it's, I don't even know how to how to describe it in adjectives, but James has really outdone himself. It's absolutely the best uh, script I've read in my career, and uh, I think it's it's going to have a greater emotional depth. The action is probably going to be even more intense at the same time. Uh, so I'm very excited about that because we can definitely take some existing concepts and explore them further, and then obviously uh, we can you know take the new themes that we've already developed that, it, that he's filmed to. Uh, and apply them to the various character situations throughout the film. So I think it's going to make the the score naturally just grow in its its vocabulary altogether. So for me, that's very exciting, and uh, I'm you know I couldn't be more thrilled than to be on on this movie and digging into it. The soundtrack is really it's really good, and I don't want to put down the, the score, but but do you work around that, or do you have in mind? But the track listing for, for the soundtrack, is that something that complements or is it just a whole different thing that you don't even care about? No, I absolutely care about it because there's very important information in those songs. The songs are selected very specifically by James because their context in the film elicit or evoke certain emotions that probably would not occur uh, in the film without those songs or, or with those songs without the picture. And so understanding that is very important in crafting the score, understanding his sensibility. And also sometimes the songs play more in the background and more subliminally. And so it's important to understand that dynamic, but when they need to pop, then the score also needs to set, prepare that in the right way. You know, so you factor that into your writing. It's not a matter of just stopping and starting in volumes. It's it's really how do we, if it's a song moment, how do we really, with the score, take us through the scene and the storytelling, but set that song up so it has a maximum impact. And um, oftentimes the songs are leading us into score, and we need to be mindful of of the song and the arrangement and factor that, you know, as far as its key, its tempo, its sensibility into the transition uh, back to score from the song. So. I find it to be really fun to work with songs in, in a movie, you know, whether I'm writing them with people or I'm just working with masters that are pre-existing and they become a central component to what the storytelling is. And I think I think there's nobody better than James at doing that. So probably, this is not your decision, but so probably the, the track listing for volume two it's, it's chosen the same time they're writing the movie and so when you start the score you already know the track listing right it's part of the process for this into, movie they're written into the script yeah so it's not like uh, James like well you know let's see what we can find later you know they're very specific and it, would you like me to give you the track listing Do now you no <laughs> <laughs> well, of course I want <laughs> you too but one song one. one song no not even one no but I will say Artist. I will say when the Guardian's first look is revealed, it'll be very exciting. You know, one thing I can say about the new movie is I watched a sequence of the movie with James. Um, I laughed, then I cried, then I laughed in the same scene, and that is wow. very difficult to get out of me. 
So it really, really inspired me. But I can't say anything specific about it because it's not my place. Probably we're going to hear something so it was like, like, Yeah. The first time you and I talked, and I'm going to tag that video to this one, it was sort of like you were feeling your way and you came up with something because James is kind of feeling his way, right? But now it's sad. Have you all also talked about the future of the Guardian story? I mean, as much as you can, because now you're the you're the sound of it. I mean, you know, for all practical purposes, people yeah. are going to be comparing anything in the future to what you've done with Curse First Two. So I would think that given your relationship with Mr. Gunn, you're going to be you know, doing this for a while, given the success of the movies. Right? Well, you never know where things will go in the future. Right now, I need to focus on the task at hand, and. I know that James has the highest expectations of himself and for the film, and it's a very high standard, so I need to focus on meeting that, and hopefully in some places exceeding that. Uh, the challenge is huge, and I never take anything for granted, and because we've already done a film, and because we already have some themes established, it doesn't make it easier. It just means that we walk into it with some understanding of a language we've created together. But the challenge of making this movie is going to be a behemoth. I mean, there's there's no way it gets easier. <laughs> it becomes more challenging, more difficult, and uh, you know I'm up for it because you know we want to do something great. Can you tell us if, if his playlist expands and maybe includes a little rap or something like that? <laughs> I can't comment on the, on anything specific. It's not my place to uh, squeeze the toothpaste out of the tube. Right. But uh, I can say that it's. It's awesome. I mean, the, it's really, really great. I feel that people will, will be into it as much or more than the first playlist. And uh, it's surprising and moving and fun and kick-ass. So. And how's it working in this movie yet? Suppose uh, to the first one that's more of an origin story, and this one we have the team more more put together, and they're an actual group, and I think it has to be more epic, and it's, it's different. And what was your approach towards doing this work? We're just getting into it, because they just finished, completed uh, production, and now, you know, they're in the... The phase where you know they're assembling a director's cut, um, but I, I would I would say you know we've I've written more themes that they've filmed to for this movie than we did the first time around, and actually what we thought was the main theme the first time around really was the Black Tears theme, which was like the the first half of that music when they're all banding their hands together before. It's really once once they, you know, the, the Guardians theme kicks in in the second half of that sequence. So the first half was, we thought it was the main theme, but once we got into the actual post-production of the movie, we realized, you know, uh, it might not have enough of an uplifting feeling to it, but we loved it. And it plays an important role in Quill's character, like his history. So um, that was a discovery that happened in post-production. I think we have a greater understanding of our principal themes going in, but there's no doubt as the film evolves, as it does daily until it hits the theater, um, there are going to be new discoveries along the way. And hopefully the strength of what we've developed that we love inspires the new ideas that are necessary to make this movie as powerful as possible. How many projects do you have going on other than Guardians 2? Or is that the... Well, Guardians is the main thing, mm -hmm. always. You know, it's James has always been priority one, regardless of whether it was a Guardians movie or whether it was Super or it was PG porn or whatever. I've always, always wanted to make myself entirely available to to him. I think he's brilliant. He's been a great collaborator and a great friend over the years, so uh, it's meaningful to my life. Um, I don't typically stack projects on top of one another, but sometimes when you're, you're in the process of making a movie, the original schedule looks good, 
but then there's a snafu in post-production and perhaps it requires a reshoot or something and then actors are not available and all of a sudden the schedule slides two, three months. And so then that's when things start to stack up a little bit. So I'm nearly done with, you know, The Coldest City, nearly done with John Wick 2, nearly done with Manson's new record. So that's all going to probably be pretty clean, you know, by the end of September. And, um, you know, I'll have a very clean few months just to, you know, hit it as hard as I can on Guardians, even though I'm working on it now. I'm curious, what studio, do you have a home studio? Do you, where do you, where yeah, do you I, build, work? Do I build studios into my house, so um, my assistant has, she has a studio there, I have one, and we have offices, and that's a separate, it's, it's connected to my house, but it's, it's separate from the house, separate entrance. Uh, I know some composers prefer to work at outside studios, but... Uh, I have a family, and because I do work a ridiculous number of hours all the time, I need to be available to see them whenever possible. And if I'm at a studio somewhere else, I'm not, I'm not going to make it sometimes. You know, you just, it, things are always going to push late. You're going to miss the opportunity to have an hour together, you know. So uh, I'm not confident in my ability to... Uh, to stop the clock every day and, and come home. And I, I like to not drive before writing music. I like to get up with my head very quiet just to start sketching out my first impressions of the day um, before I've been cut off by a driver or, you know, somebody says something to me, whatever. You know, I like to get up very early and just have a couple of quiet hours and uh, develop some ideas to work with for the day, to the beginning of the day. <laughs> exactly. You have a train of creativity. I yeah, I really, I really want that to be as unfettered as possible when I begin the day. You know, once I'm into it, then I can handle the breaks. And How do you push yourself to, to write or to compose when in everything that's creative sometimes inspiration doesn't kick in but you still have to work so so how do you force yourself to, to get into the creative process? Well you definitely, first off as an artist you have your better days not all of them are incredible but <laughs> writer's block is not an option and I do consider it like working out with weights or something I mean if you do it all the time and you keep yourself open to inspiration you'll find that you can express something interesting more frequently and get to the bottom of your ideas a little bit more simply and when I first started doing movies I could work 18 hours in a day and never end up with anything and besides most of my scores were horrible anyway um, took me a while to do one that I wasn't ashamed of but uh, you know I, I've definitely always been very very passionate about the process of making music um, sometimes we procrastinate just so that there's a degree of intensity that builds up behind the idea, the rumination of an idea, and then you know you know when it's time to strike on that. Um, I do music all the time, so I, I'm doing records and television and film, and they all seem to fuel each other, and it keeps me fresh. So I'm not just doing the same thing behind my same desk every day. That's yeah. Okay, we're, 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 we're,